All right, Elon Musk has a new boss, I guess. I wonder how that's going to go. Uh, easier said than done when it comes to creative types. Imagine being Charlie Gasparinas. Um, so he has some input here to weigh in on changes going well, on at Tesla, you know, sir. You don't have to stop me from smoking pot on the air, but you do have to stop me from saying other things. That would only but... make you more lucid. But anyway, <laughs> this Thank is you. wild, right? I mean, go ahead. Robin Denholm, a, uh, a Tesla uh, board member uh, as uh, right now is now becoming the chairman now or the chairwoman now we should point out that why is this happening because of the SEC investigation and settlement over the so-called funding secure tweet where he said he had funding secure to go private but he didn't uh, as part of the settlement uh, deal with the SEC uh, is that he had a point a, a chair, a, somebody to, to chair the company he had to split the role he appoints a chairwoman in this case Robin Denholm uh, on its on Superficially, you could say this is a great choice. She uh, worked at a uh, at a telecom provider named uh, called Tes Telstra, and she was pretty good at at, at reining in costs. Uh, but that's only part of the story, Neil. From what we understand, she she was selected to the board by Mr. Musk. Because remember, she's a, she's already on the board, and he played a role in choosing the chair. So you got to ask yourself if he plays the role in choosing her, if he put her on the board. How independent is this position supposed to going to be, which is exactly what the SEC wanted. They wanted an oversight mechanism over some of uh, Mr. Musk's sort of, I guess, you might say aberrant behavior, including uh, that tweet, some other stuff he said on Twitter, uh, maybe even smoking pot. Who knows? But uh, in any event, um, she doesn't seem to be, at least, uh, she doesn't seem to be the, an independent voice here. She seems to be someone that's very connected with the company and Mr. Musk. Uh, so that has some investors that I've talked, I've spoken to in the last couple hours uh, a little worried about, the, um, about, about her appointment. But we should point out the stock is up marginally on the news because, <coughs> as I said on paper, she's, a, she's, a, she's, a very, she's an accomplished uh, uh, cost cutter. And, uh, you know, they need to rein in costs at Tesla. They have billions of dollars in debt payments that are due. Uh, they have uh, they have profit problems. Uh, they just turned profitable, but they they've had they've had cash flow problems. So uh, this may be someone that's needed on paper, but again, not exactly someone that uh, comes with a clean slate. She's very connected to him. Neil, back to you. And by the way, we when they, the, splitting these roles, which might be the chic thing to do, it doesn't always work out. I mean, the chairman, the CEO, under both you know, different titles, right? Yeah, I mean, I've seen it. I, listen, Jamie Dimon is the chairman and CEO. He runs a very effective bank. I've seen places where you can definitely, that you could have used an independent chairman, Bear Stearns, right. Lehman Brothers, where some of the, you know, hold the, the CEO's feet to the fire a little bit. The problem is the CEO always plays a role in selecting, or often plays a role in selecting these guys. So they're never really that independent. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of, uh, how can I put it? It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's not what it's cracked up to be, Neil. Got it. All right, my, my friend, uh, Charlie Gasparino on that. We'll see how that goes.